Welcome back to the show. Welcome, beautiful people. Kustiks here, and today we talk about Alan Wake 2 and why is it so insanely good. Let's get to it. So, why is Alan Wake 2 a video game sensation? Why is it so good? Because of survival horror gameplay? No. Maybe exploring? No. Action mechanics? Also no. What then? Best looking visuals ever? Perhaps. Great looking sound design and music? Maybe. Strong creative and artistic vision? Yes. Very meta script and narration? Oh yes. Insane level of immersion and feel of feverish nightmare? Absolutely. Before we begin, I wanted to know real quick that in order to understand this game, despite what Remedy says, you will need to have an understanding of what have happened before it in Alan Wake 1 and Control. If you need to catch up, I've got you covered. Watch my video Alan Wake 2 Everything You Need to Know by clicking on the hint in the top right corner of your screen. Now let's dive deep into the lake, which is actually an ocean that is Alan Wake 2 and find out what we have on our hands. Let's start with the dessert and discuss Alan Wake 2's story first. Basically we have two separate yet intertwined stories, one from Saga's point of view and one from Alan's. Let's start with Saga. Saga's character and storyline originally was intended to help new players introduce them to paranormal world of Alan Wake. New players like Saga have no idea what's going on in this franchise in Bright Falls, what the hell is Dark Presence and Dark Place, how this world operates. And I think that real world function of her character actually ruined the game character a little. I found it very hard to believe that FBI agent with reputation of solving unsolvable cases would believe in supernatural so fast. Like literally, she believed in everything like 10 minutes of the game time. That's ridiculous. Later her story starts to unwrap, we learn new facts about her biography, together with her, I must add, and a lot of new details actually are very well thought. It's like we put the puzzle piece in place where we didn't even know we missed one, but it fits perfectly. I kinda expected her to question reality, question her own sanity at some point of the game. I mean, she will, but a little too late for my taste. But that's very subjective, obviously. Overall, she fits right in place for multiple reasons. Her origin and her family is a very interesting thing to learn about. There's a lot of mystery there too, and I think we would learn much more in upcoming DLCs or next Alan Wake game. She's also a great antipode to Alan Wake himself. She works in force, in particular FBI. She's very rational and not really affected by madness around her. She's trying to glue the real world back together while Alan is fighting his demons in Dark Place. She's also not an artist, so there is no competition between her and Alan. All of it makes them perfect partners. Alan's story on the other hand is a creative and artistic outburst. I felt like the game existed just to show us the Alan Wake's chapters. As Alan, you go through loops and spirals of experiences, your visual and audio centers get stimulated every 5 minutes with a new portion of meta writing. Here you're on TV show, here you're in a musical, here you're watching Finnish art house film and having the time of your life. I mean, at some point in the game you watch a TV show where Alan's getting interviewed together with an actor who plays Alex Case in the movies by Alan Wake's novels. This same person plays original FBI agent Alex Casey in this game. This person also played another gloomy New York resident, Max Payne. He's also voiced by the same actor who voiced Max Payne and Thomas Zane in original Alan Wake. And this character portrayed by the same Lake, who also happened to be creative director and lead writer for Alan Wake 2 game. If you didn't know what meta storytelling meant, well, now you know. And honestly, it was so surreal that approximately 30 minutes into Alan's story I decided to stop thinking about it and just go with the flow. Best decision ever. I saw all of the mediums, cinema, radio, music, photos, books, TV, theater, combining together in one powerful stream of artistic force and ravaging my mind like no game before. And after I finished the game I honestly wanted more. And I believe that Mr. Lake can give us more, I feel like he's still not at the highest point of his potential. But even if he retires tomorrow, Alan Wake 2 will be considered one of the greatest experiences in video games ever, and his magnum opus for sure. After you go through feverish nightmare with Alan Wake, after you go through lost season of the true detective with Saga Anderson, their stories finally meet to solve one last riddle. My main concern with the game's ending was that it would leave us with more questions than answers, and to my biggest surprise, underlying story of Alan Wake 
too comes out in the end like sun comes out in the morning. I enjoyed several minutes of morning sunshine and answers to my questions. And right before the credits rolled, nasty dark cloud came around the corner and looked menacingly at the sun. So we have our deal of answers. I could even say that I understood some of it. At the same time, game left us with some questions that could be definitely answered in upcoming DLCs, other Remedy Connected Universe games and of course Alan Wake 3. Moving on to the weakest part of the game and it is its gameplay. I mean it kind of feels wrong to say game has bad gameplay by praising it whatsoever, but it is what it is. It's more of an interactive movie rather than a game, I'd say in a 70-30 proportion. We have two different characters to play, FBA agent Saga Anderson and our beloved writer Alan Wake. Even though gameplay for them is quite different, game has underlying gameplay system which is common for both of them. Both characters have arsenal of weapons, different for each of them, which you can well, shoot and shooting guns themselves is pretty fun, great sound, great animations and great feedback. It sure can feel a bit slow, but that is just subject to a general law of combat system in the game. It's less arcadey comparing to the original Alan Wake, it feels more heavy, more slow, more realistic and yet, and this wicked combat system actually works really good. It creates very intense situations when you're surrounded by several enemies. It creates a feeling of real horror when you're trying to reload your gun while some shady figure already swinging his wrench at your head. It makes you duck your head in front of the screen while trying to avoid enemy attack in some dark corner of the forest. Weapons are also upgradable. Weapon upgrades are the price for exploring the world of the game, which is pretty boring honestly. I collected all of the collectibles in the game, upgraded my weapons as much as I could and honestly I wish I didn't do this. Running around Cauldron Lake for the fifth time just to collect some kids lunch boxes and pet deer heads is not that fun, believe me. Weapon upgrades are also kind of useless, I didn't feel like I gained a huge buff when my pistol became automatic for example, because enemies are moving fast and I was still shooting in semi-automatic manner. It also feels like that there is a smart loot system in the game, so you will always have just enough resources to deal with your enemies. As a last resort, you can just run from them. It works. Alan's upgrades seem better than Saga's, but it's still a huge work to find all of those, so I wouldn't do this if you're not going for platinum trophy. There is also one mechanic that came to Alan Wake 2 straight from Resident Evil games, inventory and its management. I don't know why exactly, but I always had less space in my pockets that I wanted to carry items and it drove me mad really. I played on hard difficulty and I really needed all those guns, flash grenades and signal rockets. Health items are never enough too. Maybe that's just hard difficulty for me, but yeah, I hated every bit of inventory management past middle of the game. Now let's discuss Saga's and Wake's specific gameplay mechanics or rather gameplay in general. Sagas is an FBI agent slash profiler, so her main goal is to investigate the ritualistic murder spree. So we walk around, collect evidence, put them on the board. Well, that is all. First of all, Saga's part of the story is mostly a walking simulator with rare encounters with possessed town folk. But what helped me go through this walking simulator is that we walk through absolutely stunning scenery. I can almost feel the love through the screen with which Remedy employees were crafting these locations, carefully placing objects and thinking of this location's history. Yeah, Saga has to fight several bosses too, but they kind of become interesting only closer to the end of the game, especially in the very end, oh man. Another Saga specific gameplay mechanic is her mind plays. I can see how Remedy thought it would be a great way to keep up with the story, but most of the time it feels too tedious putting those cards on the board. Overall a great idea, I would say, but I'd like to see it implemented in some other way. Alan's gameplay is somewhat different, Alan has lesser arsenal and it feels right. He's not a fighter, not an FBI agent, he just adapted to fight the dark presence with a flashlight and a pistol. You're kind of also trying to solve the case, but it's the case of your own exodus from the dark place. So you're kind of following the investigation of your own character, Alex Casey, trying to figure out the way out of the dark place. Your gameplay loop consists of arriving at some place, subway, hotel, cinema, looking for specific locations and inspiring visions that you can combine together. And here comes the most mind-blowing mechanic I've seen so far. You can base basically rewrite an entire zone to look completely different in a couple of clicks and this zone would change its appearance in a blink of an eye. Usually you get 4 zones and 4 visions every quest so potentially you have 20 different rooms roaming which you should find your answers. Alan's parts feel more alive in all aspects really. Now let's talk about visuals, sound, bugs, performance, etc. The first thing that I thought when I saw trailers is that graphics are absolutely insane, but I was thinking it was some kind of after effects or post-processing, we rarely get the same level of graphics in trailers and in the game itself, but Alan Wake 2 is not that case. 
Jesus Christ. That is the best looking game I have ever played, I'm telling you. It was the first game where I was ready to compromise some frames for image quality. Ray tracing makes this game look absolutely real, even palpable. We basically have 4 big maps in this game and all of those look absolutely fantastic. Bright Falls and its surroundings during the sunset or sunrise, I'm not sure, closer to the end of the game look absolutely stunning. I actually spent some quality time just looking at it, enjoying it meditating. Cauldron Lake is pretty hardcore when it comes to lighting, volumetric lights and some kind of fog. It was a map I've never wanted to get back to, because I was scared of this damn forest and lake so much, you have no idea. Watery though is a little personal, it actually reminded me of a certain trip I took in my own life and place looked exactly the same. Every time I went past the lighthouse there, my memories started to stir and I felt uncomfortable yet warm, because it felt like someone took my memories out and put them in the game. And we also have Alan's version of New York, and it's just making me speechless really. Dark, dystopian, grimy, raw, neon lights everywhere, volumetric lights blinking through the fog of the night city, movie posters, broken TVs and echoes of the past. Absolutely brilliant. Sound design is also great, it is tuned just enough to the point where it helps immersion a lot, but not actually ruining your experience with loud, stupid or out of place sounds. The sound directing, if that's a thing, in Alan's sequences feels much better than in Saga's though. Nightmarish New York feels alive. Like it is breathing, like it is thinking, and you can almost hear its dark thoughts. Brrr. Technical side of things actually impressed me a lot too. I expected much worse performance from this game. Even though I have a top-notch GPU, it's an AMD one and the game is an Nvidia showcase, so I was expecting the worst. In reality, I got pretty good frame rate with ultra settings on native resolution without any ray tracing, around 100 FPS or even more. To use ray tracing, I surely was forced to use FSR 2, which is definitely undercooked comparing to DLSS. I've also checked a lot of videos regarding PlayStation and Xbox performance. Console version surely has its flaws, but FPS and picture quality trade-off is pretty good there too. Considering bugs, I haven't met any actually. I once clipped through the object I should have go underneath of, but that's pretty much it. But I've heard and saw that there are issues with console versions, sound clipping, mixed subtitles, bad lip sync and several more. But Remedy already working on fixing those, releasing new patches almost every day. Overall nothing serious, game works just fine and whatever small issues it has now, it will be fixed in the nearest future. Now let's recap. Gameplay is pretty boring, especially for Saga. Alan's chapters felt more alive and well thought, graphics, sound and level design are absolutely amazing, it's arguably the best looking game to date. Story is very meta, Alan Wake 2 is much more an experience rather than a game, film or something else. Creative and artistic vision is just remarkable, Alan Wake 2 feels like the whole experience from start to finish, well pun intended perkele. It is the Remedies and Sam Lake's magnum opus so far, let's hope they will top themselves in next games. My scores go like this, gameplay 3 out of 5, visuals and sound 5 out of 5, story 5 out of 5. Fun? 4 out of 5. With a total score of 8.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching, stay curious and happy gaming. Click the like button if you like the video, leave a comment in the comment section below. And please consider subscribing to this channel if you would like to see more videos like this one.